I cannot stand Battle Shonen anime. Actually, no. I hate Battle Shonen anime fans. I can't stand the big three debates, the aversion to shipping culture, the glorification of the most formulaic tropes, power scaling discussions. I don't like it, get it out of my face. It's just a couple of kids at recess shouting talking points at each other. As much as I love anime, and even though I've been in this pig pen since I was, say, four, I just can't. Everything is a regurgitation of DBC, problems and all, and I am sick of it. Battle Shonen fanboys will debate whether or not Goku can beat cancer. Buffu Joshis will make Goku beat his meat. We are not the same. So to no one's surprise, I have not been keeping up with the modern Shonen meta outside of the most popular titles such as Demon Slayer, My Hero Academia, Attack on Titan, Mob Psycho 100, Chainsaw Man, Trash, Trash Again, and even more Trash. Now imagine my absolute surprise when I, an elder weeaboo, caught whisperings of Kagurabachi, or whatever this is. Another title for the Shonen Jump archives, sure. Another manga that gets cancelled after circulating for barely 10 chapters, if that, whatever. Boy, boy, oh boy, I'm predictably wrong as I always am. Hi, it's me, Vicky. And here in my circus, I get overly emotional about fictional people and I talk about their clothes with great enthusiasm or absolute disdain. And today we're going to dig into the Kagura Bachi insanity that has leaked into all corners of anime fandom, unearthing anime fans' obsession with this new Shonen Jump title turned meme. This is going to be a quickie where we analyze the Kagura Bachi effect on Twitter, how battle Shonen fandom culture was the fuel to the flames, and my honest opinion on Kagura Bachi so far. We're all in agreement that Twitter is a landfill for human trash with a humiliation king, but it also has become the nexus of all things trending. Now, I first heard of Kagurabachi when I saw this image. I looked at it, and then I went about my day. Not to be mean, but if I stopped and paused every time I saw another anime protag with black hair and red eyes, then, well, Hunter Hunter would be off hiatus by now. Fan edits, tweets claiming Kagurabachi is a new Big 3 Slayer, fan-made OSTs, fake anime screenshots, and a fan English dub for the manga trailer by Alex Lay. were the few among the millions of Kagurabachi posts praising the work. I knew nothing about this work going in, but the typical pattern of hyping up Battle Shonen involves the assumption that said Battle Shonen is revolutionary, said Battle Shonen is also better than all mainstream Battle Shonen, and finally, said Battle Shonen is the prodigal son that will dethrone one of the big three Battle Shonen. This excessive praise, also known as glazing, served as an accidental marketing campaign for the Battle Shonen, triggering confusion, intrigue, and some irritation from across the board. If you have spent any time around Battle Shonen fans, my condolences by the way, then you will understand that Battle Shonen fans are some of the most easily impressed, passionate, and loyal fanboys that you will ever come across. As a result, their passions are oftentimes blinding them to any type of rational logic. Their favorite battle shonen is a flawless body of work, therefore it eclipses everything else around it. Matter of fact, let's go back to My Hero Academia. Remember when My Hero Academia just dropped? Everybody and their mama hailed it as the progenitor of a new wave in anime and manga. Its likable cast and inspiring protagonists cited as key players to the IP's success. As expected, a ravenous fandom would soon follow. And My Hero Academia became everybody's favorite anime. The praise reached a point that My Hero Academia was claimed to be a contender for a spot among the big three. A title bequeathed upon Naruto, Bleach, and One Piece. Three long-running shonen titles that had simultaneously dominated the manga and anime market. And not only that, but perhaps joining the likes of Jujutsu Kaisen and Demon Slayer to create a new big three. The thematic narrative of what truly makes a hero became an inspirational mantra that even the most ordinary of us can become heroes through the strength of heart. Until completely massacring that sentiment with recent developments. Uh, all in all, we all thought they were being themselves when Kagura Bachi started trending. And now I'm getting a little jealous because I want to be a donut too. Where's my clazing? Where's my Vivi with the V sweep? Subscribe, Kate. Thanks. Bye. So, Kagura Bachi was released on September 17th to a reputation that preceded it. Vaulted to the exalted status of meme, Kagura Bachi became an anime household name against the wills of many. It quickly climbed the ranks of Shueisha's manga subscription service, Manga Plus. Reaching 5th place as of September 24th. Let me put into context what that means. Kagura Bachi, a manga whose early reputation is predicated on a viral meme, outranked the likes of My Hero Academia, Oshinoko, Dragon Ball Z Super, Boruto, Don the Don, and Spy Family. The common thread tying these popular manga, aside from Don the Don, are their wildly successful anime adaptations, of which Kagura Bachi does not have. 
To say it is a sweep is an understatement. To say it's a surprise is barely scratching the surface of how dumbfounded the collective fandom is. But given what we've discussed about the trends of Battle Shonen worship, Kagurabachi's climb to trending status was like a parody of Battle Shonen fans. Kagurabachi's name was shouted, passed around, and shoved down the throats of unsuspecting victims, with the same enthusiasm as a One Piece fan begging on their knees for me to give it a chance. Please, please. The answer is no. The fervor at which Kagurabachi took over anime Twitter was unimpeded, leaving the general anime fan to look on with genuine confusion. And if you're wondering why all of this sounds familiar, this is basically what the internet did to this stupid movie. I'm not going to waste your time talking about mediocre art, we're already talking about Battle Shonen manga and I don't work with LA's waste removal department, so I'll be quick. Morbius Sweep refers to the vital meme sensation around Morbius, a 2022 Marvel superhero film by Sony known for its atrocious box office performance and equally disappointing ratings. Everyone was fully aware of this, and we all joined together singing the false praises of the shitty Marvel movie. Catchphrases like, it's Morbin time, I hate explaining memes, would spread like locusts, eventually reaching the ears of Sony execs who were stupid enough to re-release it in theaters? More billion bucks? Yeah, down the trash, bitch. Like any good meme, irony was the backbone behind Kagurabachi and Morbius Sweet. In the case of Morbius, the glorified pile of dot shit was just that. Thus claiming that it was Oscar worthy was a ridiculous declaration perfect for meme fodder. However, I would dare say Kagurabachi was almost too convincing to be considered ironic because it was handled with the same energy as other popular battle shonen titles. It was obvious to anyone with a functioning prefrontal cortex that Morbius just wasn't good. It's a hideous movie with awkward acting and an uninspired script. However, the same cannot be said of Kagurabachi from just a glance. If only two chapters out at the time of this recording, Kagurabachi has not rolled around in the swamp like Morbius has. By all accounts, Kagurabachi looks inoffensive and formulaic at worst. A sword-toting MC with a thousand-yard stare fighting supernatural entities in a bleak world of ultraviolence isn't exactly something revolutionary. So, I wanted to change that. Everyone is out here joking around, saying silly sh** about this random ass manga, but I want to see what Hokazona's cooking. I can give him that at least. My serotonin-deprived brain makes it so I can't enjoy anything with the same enthusiasm as I did in middle school. So let's change that. Let's give Kagurabachi a try. And see if it really is the Naruto nuke. The, um, the berserk pussy destroyer, the one piece oppressor, the, uh, jujutsu kaisen juggler? A few inches later. Lo and behold, Christmas has come early and so have I. I return with findings. If you want to experience Kagurabachi firsthand, then I recommend skipping to this timestamp. Or pausing this video and giving it a read. Alright. Now. Kagurabachi in summation, is an inoffensive manga about a young man seeking vengeance set in a world of sorcery. The sun is shining, a humble home is wrapped in the warmth of the sunshine like a blanket. 15-year-old Chihiro Rokuhira, the main character, is a young swordsmith apprentice who aspires to one day become a master smith like his father, Kunishige Rokuhira. Chihiro spends his days toiling away with hot steel and fire, beating the fighting spirit into the blade with a hammer alongside his father. When Chihiro's father isn't busy making miracles out of metal, he strikes up a conversation with their pet goldfish. He's a responsible kid. A little too responsible compared to the likes of his goofy dad. Eccentricities aside, Chihiro respects the hell out of his dad, due in part to the war stories he'd hear about his dad constantly from his friend, Shiba. Without fail, Shiba would recite the tale of Chihiro's father's forged sword that would turn the tides of the Seite War. We don't really know anything about the war as of now, but it's these stories that stoke the flame in Chihiro's chest for the art of smithing. Within the flame, however, lies a heavy responsibility. Chihiro's father imparts upon him a truth and a warning. With every sword crafted, the chance of it being used as a weapon of mass destruction falls onto the shoulders of the smith. Chihiro takes the burden, the honor, the full weight of it upon his shoulders, much like his father had. His gaze falls upon his father's broad back in silent reverence, that is, before telling him to clean up after himself and the goldfish. We have a mini time skip, roughly three years or 38 months to be exact. Chihiro, now 18, is seen bearing his sword easily into the bodies of many foes, summoning a rain of blood and limbs. During the time skip, Chihiro's father was slain by three sorcerers, a crime that robs Chihiro of his remaining family. He takes up his father's last forged sword, the one he died protecting, and wields it as the blade to slay all those he deems corrupted. If you've spent any time consuming media, 
you'll see that tales of vengeance are nothing unique. The tale of a man scorned, taking up the weapon of his master to take revenge against the people who robbed him of all joy, is also not unique. That plot structure is identical to that of Blue Exorcist, another body of work set in the world of demons, ghouls, and other supernatural entities that the main character must fight to seek vengeance for the death of his adoptive father. So, in my book, the premise of Kagura Bachi isn't really something Big 3 material, but it does have the base appeal that many casual shonen fans would be drawn to. Flashy action, a stoic protagonist clad in black, and a sword. It doesn't take much to entertain a couple of monkeys. However, I find that the thing it needs to spark the flame is a reason to sympathize with Chihiro. Grief in the scope of anime is more of a launch pad or a call to action for the protagonist, and as a result has become a tool to win over the feelings of the audience. The little puppy with a demon in its belly bun is an orphan, are you really going to kick it? Yes, but the loss of a loved one is a human experience that truly equalizes all members of the human race, therefore making it an efficient tool to immediately get us on the side of the protagonist. Because of this exact reason, however, the presence of grief serving as the motivation behind the protagonist's actions has become a sort of common trope and an inside joke among anime fans. Oh no, your dad died? Oh no, your family died? Oh no, your mama died? Oh no, you don't even know your dad? Oh no, you slaughtered the love of your life, the only one who ever came close to you, who also happens to be the ex-fiance of the man you've killed at the behest of the government officials who used your skills of the sword, and desperate desire to be a part of something greater than yourself, and save you from the void of loneliness that has been your only reliable companion? Boo hoo, bitch. In essence, if you're going to be the protagonist of any battle shonen, tragedy is going to be in your DNA. There's no fighting it. Creating a bond with Chihiro outside of his grief, then, is what I believe Kagura Bachi is missing from their formula to be a successful manga. Given that this is the advice I have settled on for the past two chapters I've read so far, and that this is only my perspective as a consumer and someone who's dead as walking into this because of a meme, take it with a grain of salt. Although Mob from, well, Mob Psycho 100 has the simple goal of becoming a popular guy who gets the girl, something that is communicated to the audience effectively. For example, we learn from the very beginning that Mob is an ordinary boy with not so ordinary powers another common anime trope. However, his desire to work hard to improve his body and get the attention of his love interest without his powers becomes the first plank in the emotional scaffolding to sympathize with Mob. Yes, Mob's middle school struggle is considerably simpler compared to Chihiro's plan of vengeance, but the reason why it's so much better at winning over the audience is because of how we spend time with Mob outside of that desire. We see that Mob is a sweet yet naive pacifist who believes his abilities are not what makes him extraordinary, quite the contrary. Because of that belief, we, the audience, are impressed by Mob's down-to-earth and humble nature. This is communicated within the first episode. So far, I'm not getting that with Chihiro, who, as far as we know, is a boy with a dead dad who wants to be a swordsmith, and that's it. I think Kagurabachi's strengths, then, lie in the overall presentation of the manga. If anything, I'd say the art style looked pleasant with its contrasting shading and lighting, clean line work, and straightforward character design. Chihiro, in particular, captures the essence of the violent 1920s post-industrial revolution Japan-inspired world of Kagurabachi. His color scheme, black and red, are bold and striking colors that complement one another based on their contrasting hues. The trench coat and turtleneck combo with the black slacks offer a touch of matrix flair also creates a somber silhouette that marks Chihiro as an intimidating character standing out from a crowd of average people. His hair is spiked, giving him a more aggressive appearance, taking into account his massive X-shaped scar that sits off to the side of his face. It's clear that the mangaka designed Chihiro to look like a straightforward, single-minded, and almost callous man on a mission. And given the fact that he has a katana on hand at all times with slanted red eyes and a frown, Chihiro exudes energy on par with a sword for hire with only the target in mind. At least I can say that Kagurabachi's mangaka knows exactly who their demographic is, and I can't fault the creator for that. This is not a decry of Kagurabachi, rather a acknowledgement of Kagurabachi's unlikely effects on the anime community, its content thus far, and its strengths and weaknesses. I really hope that Kagurabachi outgrows its status as a meme, because I do think there is a nugget of small potential there if the writing for Chihiro can be improved in the right direction. I just wanted to make a small video on the psychology of fandom, which, if you've seen my Miguel video, you know I'm fascinated by. I thought you guys deserve something before the next massive video on character AI comes out, so let me know what your thoughts are on Kagurabachi. Do you love the memes? Do you hate the memes? Do you unironically love Kagurabachi? Or do you hate it? Long story short, all of my socials are in my bio. You like my shit, check me out. I'm on Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, obviously, because otherwise how are you watching this video? And yeah, that's pretty much it. I've been me, Vicky, and that's it. See you.